Welcome to the Centerport United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs, and alongside our music director, Joe Ferrante, we welcome you to this time of prayer and music. And we also want to give thanks for Bob and Lori Hawkins, who will be leading us in music today. And we hope that you sing along with us from home and deepen into this time. You know, we're in this fall season, and it has abruptly turned to fall after what felt like summer for an extended period of time. And I was reminding everybody this week about the beauty of fall, and that the season is about harvest, and even abundance for so many of us. But let's remember there are many out there who do not have an abundant life. And let's see what we can do to be the light as our campaign is going on, and be the light to those who need more abundance in their lives. And whether we can give them more materially in our possessions, or spiritually, by lifting them up and raising them up in some way. How awesome is that? Let's have that be one of our prayers as we deepen into this service. The theme is clothed in love. So I want to ask us all to close our eyes, breathe out any distractions that you may have, and with this theme, clothed in love, let that spirit fill you. Feel that embrace all around you. Jesus. 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 There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's a subject about that name. That's our opening prayer from hymn number 171 from our United Methodist hymnal. Me called, there's just something about that name, Jesus. And we know Jesus' spirit is with us here in this place and where you are. And it's that same spirit that binds us together right now and always. And we thank Bob and Lori for leading us in our first hymn called Spirit Song. <laughs> Thank you. 
wherever you're gathering with us online, we thank you for being here and letting that Holy Spirit, inviting the Spirit in, letting it deepen and grow and bind with us here as well. And so we start with giving thanks to God in this prayer time for all of our blessings. You know, this past Sunday, we were outside worshiping, and maybe some of you saw it online, and we were worshiping with our pets, too. And I know many of you at home either have a pet now or have had one before. Maybe some of you have more than one. And it's a beautiful service. It's lots of fun. Of course, it's a lot more energetic because the puppies are running all around the place and trying to sniff each other. And we may even have other animals as well at times. But it makes it more fun and exciting. And they can demonstrate something about unconditional love in a way that maybe we've forgotten. And that reminds us of Jesus' unconditional love for all of us. And look what Jesus did. Not only came to earth in one of the most dangerous times in history and had people trying to get him and eliminate him from his birth, but certainly teaching and guiding and preaching and converting and healing and saving individual people along the way from their life of misery or maybe their life in a way of evil and helping them to turn. And then, of course, sacrificing himself for all of us and trusting in God that he would rise again and live forever. And that's the promise for all of us. And so we begin with giving thanks for Jesus because we really are clothed in love every second of our lives and we don't often focus on that so I hope that you join me in first and foremost giving thanks to God for Jesus and Christ's spirit within us all the time and there are many prayer requests out there I know this past Sunday we saw a little one out in the yard as we were gathering. We give thanks for Franklin and his birth, and we're awaiting another birth uh, for someone in the church as well, imminently, any day now. And we also have a parishioner whose name is Margaret, and she is expecting, I don't know, her sixth or seventh great-grandchild any day now. Lots of new life, weddings galore, in fact, our son's wedding is coming up in less than seven weeks now. And so lots of new life and new relationships everywhere. And we give thanks for that. We know there are many that are not doing so well. Many that feel alone or isolated. Many that feel ill at this time. And some that are concerned about upcoming procedures. And so we take time to pray to God for all of the celebrations and thanksgivings in our lives and giving thanks that God will carry us through even the harder times. And we pray for those who need healing in mind and body and spirit. And for humanity, that we can learn to respect one another, to listen to one another, to draw nearer to one another once again and not push back, to not stand opposed and be so divisive, but to embrace and love, and even when we disagree, to still recognize that even those we disagree with are also clothed in love. So let us remember that as we go forward. I'm just going to allow us to take some time in silence. Lift up the prayers on your hearts today for our nation, other nations, whatever is on your heart. Let us pray.
prayers on our hearts this day and always. And we pray now in the words that your Son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In this time of experience, being clothed in love, it's important to stay still so that we can recognize that. And that's part of what this next hymn is all about. Be still, my soul. Teaching counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. 
Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Amen. You know, as I was reading that scripture just now, the only thing that kept coming to me was thanksgiving. I just kept hearing that being clothed in love, and for some reason, the celebration of the Thanksgiving holiday kept coming to me, and I was, as I was reading, flashing back in my mind about Thanksgiving's past with my family, my extended family, and when we were out west with Gina's family, or wherever, sometimes with friends gathered right here in this community. You know, Thanksgiving happens to be my favorite holiday of the year. It's really how we should live our lives always in thanksgiving to God for everything. Of course, we have problems, trials that come, sometimes terrible tragedies that may happen in our lives. But those are typically a season of our life. And there are blessings that remain forever and ever and some that we have for so long, and we take so much of it for granted. Thanksgiving Day, when Gina and I and our family that are gathered, while we're preparing the meal, I'm constantly thinking of how blessed I am to have family around, for the house that I have to live in that's provided by the church, for this church beautiful building and grounds we have, but for the most important part of the church, really what the church is, the body of Christ and all the people in it. There's so much to be grateful for. And for me, Thanksgiving is a holiday that doesn't come with having to do too much decorating. It's not that I have to run out and buy gifts for a ton of people and get all caught up in so many things to do. It's just literally coming to a table and being thankful with those that are gathered. It doesn't, it hasn't been taken over so much secularly. And I really enjoy that. And the deeper and the, that I go, the deeper I go in my relationship and the older I get, I'm trying to make celebrations like Christmas a little more like that. I do love the decorations, I do love some of the other pieces of Christmas, like going around and singing with those that are maybe shut in in their house or just need a little uh, blessing in their lives. There are other pieces of the season which are truly amazing. But maybe take dialing it down on some of those other pieces that are not so important and not so thankful. You know, this scripture is reminding me that we are clothed in love and to live a life of peace means not letting ourselves get too worked up and doing too much that we miss the point. How are you ever going to be still and know how much God loves you if you don't ever stop? As we go forward into the fall and celebrate the bounty and harvest of this season, the abundance that God offers to us, let us be more than thankful. Let us commit to living a life of gratitude and giving thanks for that love that we should be able to feel around us, in us, and working through us all the time. That love that will never, ever let us go. Clothed in love, living with kindness and humility and gentleness and patience, forgiving each other and forgiving ourselves, remembering what binds us all together and letting peace live throughout our lives. I love this last piece of the scripture. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. 
And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. What a beautiful reminder of who we're called to be. And Father Lord, I don't think I have to tell you about the importance of singing and <laughs> hymns and psalms and how much joy that can bring and offering our thanks to God. And so we thank you for being here and leading us in song. And we look forward to hearing Be Thou My Vision.